Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Uh, we'll get rolling. This is the Acquia Podcast i want to talk about the next one in relatively neutral terms and encourage everyone who's interested absolutely to go and watch, but to then um, really read about it, think about it, and form their own opinions. So uh, a lot of waves were made um, by Larry Garfield. He did a session called Managing Complexity, and he drew, um, he based on a lot of research and a lot of thinking that he's obviously done, he um, drew some conclusions about, um, so he drew a lot of parallels, right, between um, how complex and how large a set of code is to what sort of tools and philosophies you need to um, have in place to manage it, um, and, and, and very elegantly drew the parallel to societies and communities through uh, various historical and um, political different bits of philosophy, and then continue drawing that line over to Drupal today, saying we're really massive, we're really complex, um, and we're taking a long time to do uh, get Drupal 8 out the door, for example, and, and some thinking on his part about why that happens and some frustrations that he's obviously gone through himself and a proposal for how to manage this complexity. Um, and uh, uh, let me see if I'm not, see if I can get this right elegantly, he basically suggests um, putting in place some structures that give, for example, subsystem maintainers the authority to tell people yes or no on certain concepts um, so that people can get stuff done. And uh, not everybody agreed with him. And uh, there were some, there's some really interesting discussion going on. What was your impression of that talk, Chris? Um, you know, I, I have a hard time, I think, being, um, being like, distancing myself from the topic because, you know, I, anybody who's heavily involved in a core version uh, is going to have a significant opinion on this one way or the other. You know, for me, a lot of the things Larry said uh, rang true for others. I know that uh, their, their uh, specific... Uh, experiences are going to not necessarily, uh, you know, map to what Larry was saying. And I, I think that that actually complicates the conversation to a certain degree uh, because we do all have a very different experience when we get into core development based upon the areas we choose to work in and what it is that we're trying to do. Um, you know, so I went to that session. Uh, I thought it was a very good session. I know not everybody agrees there, uh, and I, I think that that's okay, right? I think what's most important is that we begin to have a conversation around this and at least, uh, you know, say, hey, uh, you know, that is a problem because, or that isn't a problem because, and come to a consensus as a community. Um, so, you know, for my part, um, I would like to see some processes in place that actually make what Larry's talking about um, more enforceable. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, my experiences were different than other people's. So I, I think that we have to, as a group, just kind of um, work through this topic and figure out what's going to work. I think, I think it's really important that we figure out how to work fast, though, because we're talking about moving to a semantic versioning solution where we do a new Drupal release roughly every six months. And, you know, if we're busy spending weeks or months at a time uh, fighting over a particular topic in the issue queue, uh, then, you know, which is bound to happen, right? It, it'll happen no matter what sort of processes we have in place. But, you know, I, I think that uh, having, having a really good notion for how to move forward on that sort of stuff is, is something that we are going to have to achieve and have to achieve very quickly if we actually want to keep the Drupal 8 release schedule that we have been discussing. Yeah, so the the discussion, so 
on the one hand, Larry is suggesting some structures and some concepts of responsibility and authority going together without really sketching out how that would work in practice. And uh, the biggest objections that I think I saw were some people objecting to his choice of examples, some people objecting in some ways to his assumptions about how authority and such work right now in Drupal, and a state of counter proposal equally amorphous, which, which was more or less, if we communicate more and better and maybe actually implement, implement project good project management rather than authority in some form that that we could do better so in any case rather than taking sides absolutely worth watching the session listening to all the questions at the end of it reading all the comments on the drupal uh con amsterdam website node i will publish the link to that um larry also links to uh, most everything he read uh, and and looked at uh, in terms of research, a couple, uh, a session by Sam Boyer and a post by Sam Boyer, I think especially important. And um, when we, uh, when you and I were talking, Chris, we also thought that it would be worth people checking out Emma Jane Hogbin's session, The Danger of Having No Why, which was from DrupalCon Austin, which touches on a similar area. And Lisa Welchman's The Paradox of Open Growth, that was her keynote from DrupalCon Prague. So we will link to all of that, and um, I encourage people to go and think their own thoughts and 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 uh, and and see what we can do to help our community. Yeah, and I, I don't know about the Emma Jane one. Um, you had that up there. I saw some other people link to that during you know the broader discussion of this on Twitter, um, and you know the Lisa Welchman one was absolutely suggested uh, by the community. I had a few people uh, suggest watching that one, and it ended up being. Like, like these are all prior works within the Drupal community on the same sort of topic. So yeah, definitely exactly, worth watching exactly. this context around the, the subject. Okay, so I want to make three suggestions without much discussion of things that, uh, if they sound interesting to people, um, I highly recommend checking them out. So the first suggestion is go and watch Cory Doctorow's keynote he talks about open source, he talks about our responsibility as open source practitioners, and he talks about the danger of letting the Internet of Things and the computerization of everything fall into the hands and the control of um, essentially the wrong parties. He talks about surveillance, he talks about proprietary systems, and our chance as open source people to make a positive difference in the world. Super, super, super highly recommended. He's a really interesting thinker and writer. Anyway, he had a, and he, he delivered a really compelling, uh, interesting speech without any slides. Um, for those of you interested in um, testing Drupal and um, uh, all, all of that uh, testing infrastructure and so on, um, I found out that they did a there's a there's an initiative kind of going on called Drupal CI. Um, so in, in the, the goal of this, it's a sort of an ad hoc group that's come together to implement continuous integration workflow for Drupal and um, uh, working on testing and, and stuff. And it's pretty fascinating. Um, there's a blog post about it up on the website of Previous Next. I will link to that. And the third dry suggestion, uh, Susan Rust continued her series of talks about business and project management and client work and Drupal development, um, which is actually really worth checking out. And it goes, um, so it starts uh, sort of working backwards. She did a session in Amsterdam called Trainwrecks and Ugly Baby Client Meetings. Uh, she did a similar uh, related talk in Austin and one in Portland as well. They are pretty neat and pretty detailed. If you have anything to do with a Drupal shop, uh, go check those out. And so, Chris, last two sessions that we want to talk about. If we can keep the, our discussion relatively compact, we'll, we'll, we won't go too much over the time. That we do. Yeah. So, um, first off, and I thought it was amazing and super important for everybody working with Drupal 7 right now, anyone who's got an eye on building in Drupal 7 or taking a Drupal existing Drupal 7 infrastructure and moving it to Drupal 8 at any point, Dave Reed did a talk called Future Proof Your Drupal 7 Site. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, Dave had a lot of really, really great points in that. Um, that entire session was really about like what modules you should be using. If you are starting a Drupal 7 site today, uh, it was essentially like a, um, like a eat this, not that, except for modules uh, for upgradability from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. So uh, a lot of really great points in that. Um, I think some of it was subject to you know, your specific uh, use cases, but all in all, um, some really awesome suggestions there and uh, great stuff to keep in mind. So you know, if you're building a Drupal 7 site today and you want to be as compatible as possible with Drupal 8 um, as early as possible, uh, this session is totally for you. Yeah, and so he, he um, had a bunch of general suggestions uh, about things to choose. Uh, a section of things that it were developed for Drupal 8 that have been backported to Drupal 7 that are really good ideas to use, and also a list of things absolutely not to use in Drupal 7 now. So a very solid hour of useful information there. Um, there's also a blog post about it um, on OSTraining.com <clears throat> that lists some of his points, so I'll definitely link to both of those. Now, um, I just watched this this morning, and it's a really fantastic site um, uh, presentation, uh, which touches much closer to home for the work that I do now most days. How to market Drupal versus Adobe Experience Manager, Sitecore, or Ektron. And this was a guy, and I say a guy, and I should know his name, from Adyax, Maxim Topolov from Adyax, which is a, which is a big Drupal shop over here in Europe. Um, and just talking about how many amazing advantages we have as Drupal uh, when we're selling, trying to sell into large deals and we're competing with these gigantic proprietary systems. And eye opener, um, he was also pretty honest about some, some weaknesses that we have and stories to tell, um, you know, balancing total cost of ownership versus, versus something that it's a little harder to implement. Absolutely worth seeing from my point of view and my take on it, and, and I wanna hear yours in a second, Chris. My take on it was anybody who is trying to sell bigger deals, anybody who's trying to move their Drupal business up in deal size and, and sort of importance of the organizations that they work for, and anybody who's working in that space should go and check this out. It's pretty short, he only talks about 35 minutes, but it is pretty much solid gold the whole way. Yeah. Um, I totally agree, and and it was a little short, uh, and you know what? <laughs> it was solid gold the whole way. There was so much good stuff in that one. Um, so, like, the, I think this just goes to show that, like, sometimes uh, shorter session formats can actually be just jam-packed with, you know, with really, really great stuff. Um, but I, I think, you know, there were, there were a lot of really great points he made. You know, if you've been doing... Um, Adobe or Sitecore um, or some of these others, you know, and uh, he really focuses in on Adobe for the most part, kind of dismisses the others as being, you know, not really relevant at the scale that we're competing these days. Uh, I, I, you know, obviously I'm not having to be in the trenches doing that like he is right now. Um, so I defer to his expertise there. But he spends a lot of time talking about, you know, total cost of ownership here. Here's what a, the average license uh, for, you know, Adobe's product is. Um, here's what the overall, you know, two, three year, whatever it was, um, you know, revenue from that looks like, et cetera, et cetera. And he's just like, you know, it's pretty easy to go in, show that we have an awful lot of features and then say, all that money that you're gonna pay them for a license, why don't you just put it into marketing? And you know, we can either put it into further development on the on the site and do more things that you wanted to do, or you know, you know, you could keep that money and do other things with it. He had a lot of really, really great points through that throughout yeah, the entire a, session. Yeah, there was a there was a there was a point where he had video from the Adobe um, uh, experience manager conference where they say, you know, and it's in pub completely public information, the average deal size is $450,000, and the average amount of services that goes on top of that is two or three times that amount. So he says, average Adobe Experience Manager deal is $2 million, 
450,000 of that is going straight to Adobe. Why don't you spend that money on value add instead? And he actually, he used a slide that I use a lot in my presentation where you present the different costs in an IT project and, and, and they're mostly equal, but as soon as you get to having a $0 license fee with Drupal, right? All of a sudden you can reallocate your budget to, and he put it as value add, which I love, um, but you can reallocate it to training and you can reallocate it to more design, more marketing, more features, whatever you want. Right. Um, and to be honest, if you're talking about a half a million dollars, that is so much, you can get so much Drupal, right? For half yeah. a million dollars. So, um, no, it was absolutely, it was absolutely stellar. And um, I, I think he focused on Adobe. I mean, that, maybe that is his day-to-day experience, like you said, but Adobe are kind of known as the demo kings. They give really, really slick, really, really beautiful demos. And um, one of the biggest sort of calls to action that I took out of the session was we need to, as a community, uh, invest in and use more of tools like the Acquia demo framework And I guess we can close with this. Uh, Acquia has a team of people working on this thing called the Demo Framework, which is a distribution on Drupal.org. And it is Drupal configured to look good. And it's Drupal configured to do a bunch of realistic things and and show off a bunch of really nice workflows um, in a beautiful way. And um, it's... it's, um, Oh, right. And it's designed with a set of demo paths Um, There are a couple that come with it, and then you can design your own so that you can give compelling, aesthetically beautiful uh, demos. So check that out. And um, so, Chris, last words, DrupalCon Amsterdam. Um, You know, it was a really great DrupalCon. I think uh, this DrupalCon was probably historic for a number of reasons. Um, uh, not the least of which is rolling beta one for Drupal eight. So, you know, I th- think we have a lot of really great stuff to look forward to here in the very, uh, very near future. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, everybody's going to get together at bad camp and, and have more words on this. So if you aren't planning to come, it's in the really near future and you should totally be there. I will be there. I will see you there. But DrupalCon Amsterdam, perhaps also most awesome fact, we smashed destroyed, crushed oh, that's the, true. Attendance, the attendance record for a European DrupalCon. We had something like 2,300 people there, which yep. is about 500 more than have ever been at a European DrupalCon before. So um, I, I, I wouldn't want to you know, speak too soon, but that kind of growth is that feels really, really exciting. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I came out of Amsterdam with just uh, so much uh, positive energy. Yeah, me too. Chris, thanks for getting up so early to talk with me. I will see you in San Francisco very soon. Anyone who's watching this after Bad Camp, um, come to the next Bad Camp. Come to NYC Camp. Go to your local local Drupal Camp. Come to a DrupalCon somewhere. Would love to see you there. Would love to talk with you there. Uh, Chris Vanderwater, thanks again. See you soon. Thanks, Jim.